Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're from. J. Rowe here, former host, Big Hair Hits, Allegheny Mountain Radio. Fortune and Glory, cliffhanger game, board game review. Uh, lots of pieces going on here with this game. Uh, to do, do over 165 plastic pieces. And let's take a look in the box really quick to see what some of those pieces entail. Uh, well, first you get a rule book. It's probably one of the most convoluted rule books I've ever seen. Uh, although it does have good color examples of what it's talking about, and I do like how it breaks things down into little white boxes. Just little nuances that happen in the game. You're going to be flipping back and forth. It, it doesn't seem to be in a coherent order, <laughs> unfortunately. So your first two or even three games might be spent digging through this thing as you play. We got some, uh, again, you need, you need your own baggies, of course, tokens, figures, all that kind of stuff. la di da di da Let's take a look at the board. And uh, the board is a world map uh, that has treasures, Nazi bases, secret base, Nazis, uh, the red guys, I call them boss Nazis, and the uh, two bodyguards are with them, have uh, special abilities beyond regular Nazis that kind of appear on the board, right? Uh, our heroes, and this is, uh, I'm in the middle of the game, our heroes are technically chilling in the cities right now, and I'll tell you why they uh, went to those cities. And uh, let's uh, see what the goal of the game is, here we go. Uh, goal of the game is to find these treasures on the board. The treasures get you fortune. Nazis need to get uh, 15 fortune to win the game. Not 15 fortune. They need to get 15 points on the score tracker. And uh, players need to get 20 score trackers over here. Uh, as Nazis get fortune, every three fortune, they bump it up one. Every time they find a treasure, they bump it up too. Technically, I lost this game already. The Nazis are at 18, and I'm only at 8. But I'm just trying to see uh, how far I can get and uh, adjust the difficulty. Because uh, you do get well down pretty bad by the Nazis in this game. Uh, these are kind of cool, the components. Uh, they look like little like Aztec-looking pressed coins pretty cool bigger ones are five smaller ones are one these are glory and these are fortune fortune is what gets you score on the tracker and also uh, you have to spend these to fly from city to city and these you spend on everything else in the game whether it's gear cards common items allies and that kind of stuff right and speaking of cards you have a very uh, varied cards here, common items, gear, dangers, and uh, events. These are the ones you're going to use the most. And uh, we'll go through a round here. Uh, to do two, and disclaimer, I have yet to see a video that got all the rules correct as they went. And this is going to be the same thing. I'm going to get some rules wrong, of course. Uh, part of the, part of it is just laziness of trying to find it in the rule book. Sometimes you just make things up. Here are the tributes of one of your dudes. Numbers signify how many dice you're going to roll to be successful within that category. Some traps need agility, combat when you're fighting Nazis, so on and so forth. So here's one dude. Here's the other dude. And uh, here's some cards that I've earned and bought throughout the game and I'll show you how to earn cards and buy cards here we go again the goal is to find these treasures get to a major or minor city to sell the treasure uh, selling it in a minor city get you that uh, value right there plus one if you get it uh, sell it in a major city and all you do to get one of these treasures, to get them out on the board to start, is uh, you draw one artifact and you draw one adventure card and you put them together. You know, of power. What of power? The eyes of power. 
this number signifies again how much fortune you get from finding that treasure and how many challenges you need to succeed in in order to collect that treasure okay so la di da right do, 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 do. So, uh, our heroes are in major cities right now. The reason they are there, because last round I sold some treasures and got some fortune. And the Nazis are always chilling at a treasure. Boss Nazis, I call them. So when you try to collect those treasures, you gotta take out the bodyguards first. And then attempt to take out the boss Nazis, whose cards lie over here and uh, we have to go through dangers in order to find a treasure all they gotta do is search and uh, instead of let's say the shadow of time for example instead of three dangers that they have to go through they just search three times successful right meaning that this chick rolls four Search dice, four dice, and if uh, she gets a three, four, no, four, five, or six, unless some text tells you differently, four, five, or six, uh, she succeeds. And that's, um, let's say she rolls, here we go, let's do a practice thing, just for laughs. Let's say she rolls, boom, okay. She got it three times, right? Instead of being successful and then rolling again, and then rolling again, okay, hey, I got it all three times. No, you just count the dice. She got it three times. So if she were on that spot, and if it was her turn, she would collect that, turn it in, and get her fortune and move up the tracker. So, there you go. All right. And I use this as a, I just use a die uh, from another game just to... Uh, do who goes first and who's next and all that. Okay, so let's go through a round here. Uh, initiative. Which player hero goes first? Here we go. Boom. Alright, so this would be player one. That's player two. Just for laughs. Okay, player two goes first. Give him the marker. Just in case you walk, walk away from the table and all that. So you know who's next. Now let's say, for example... Then it says somebody rolled a one. Even though uh, you lose for initiative, meaning you gotta wait your turn, you get an event card, which all these, 99% of them are good. Okay, they help you, they benefit you. Here we go. Uh, it says, let's see if we can get that to focus, ladies and gentlemen. I'll take that. Play to steal any one artifact or gear from another hero in the same space. Now, the reason you would do that is because there is a competitive rule set for this game. So you'd probably want to do that. But the co-op, you'd want to do this. Play while in the same space as a villain to roll a d6. On the roll of 3+, steal any one artifact that the villain currently has. This would be a good thing to have. You put it with your stuff. Right? And you might uh, need that. Okay. So. La -da 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 -da. Where is this guy on the board? Let's see. Alexander Cartwright. He's the guy with the shotgun. There he is. Kind of chilling at the city. Uh, he rolled a six. So he can move six. Uh, let's see how far one of the treasures is. Well, let's see. Uh, kind of far away. So, just for laughs, let's pretend he had enough money to fly there or he rolled well enough to get there. Because these borders here signify how many spaces and C spaces might have a two here, which means it takes two spots to, uh, two off your dice to get through that. So in order to get there, let's see, from the city to the mainland is one, two, three, four. Well, it actually does make it legitimately. So uh, we'll move him over there. Ta-da. And he's going for the shadow of time. La-di-da. Okay. So he needs to get through three dangers successfully. So let's see what we got. Let's pick from the 
Normally you draw from the bottom of the danger pile. And see what danger we have to deal with now. A car chase. Uh, to outmaneuver and outrun the speeding car. Agility, you gotta roll five or better, and you gotta do it twice or get two dice on a roll to uh, win to get around this danger. So let's do it. His agility is uh, four. And plus one, he got this card. Uh, what kind of card is that? A gear card. So he visited a city and bought that. And you just pick it off the top. You don't uh, look at the gear cards. You just get what you get. You spend your money and you hope you get something good. So we got something good there. So that's five dice we're going to use to try to beat this. And uh, if we do, let's see what happens if we do. One, two, three, four, five dice. La -di -da. Okay. All right. Already I've beaten it because I need two successes two at least two dice in however many rolls if I get one at least one success then I get to roll all my dice again but in this instance I've gotten three successes so I beat that cool now if I want to cash in now camp out meaning to heal all my wounds and cash this in now I get the glory but I would have to start over on my next round my turn ends so uh let's see i want to keep going because i have no wounds and uh la -di -da. okay let's pick another one let's pretend i rolled badly let's pretend i didn't get it uh what is the danger here next one do 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 ice caves la -di -da. there's some fluff text and lore five uh his lore is four so that's not bad off his card Requires an extra success while in ice. It's the ice symbol off the board. He is not. He's in the jungle currently. All right? So, ice is up here towards the north, which makes sense. All right? So, there's one right there. Okay. So, we don't have to worry about that. So, we need lore success too. Let's pretend we rolled badly. Okay? Didn't get it, didn't make it. So, if you flip it over, that's the cliffhanger it's called, right? Your turn ends and you get a cliffhanger. Uh, fight dice, five wounds. You run into a Yeti. It's always something bad, a cliffhanger. And uh, there you go. So it's the other player's turn. Let's pretend uh, he went through his turn. And now, um, then the villains go, la -di -da, all that. Now it's the next round. We're just pretending to show you how to get through a cliffhanger. Okay. Glory 7. Uh, he gets five fight dice, which is a lot. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. And you, for combat, uh, I get three. Off my card it says three. And you roll all the dice all at once. And here we go. All a creature or an enemy needs is uh, four, five, or six. He got uh, he hit us three times. However, on my card, character card, I get one defense, six wounds, one defense, meaning cancel out one of his hits. So, technically, this guy. One of these guys has a count, so you put it to the side. So you hit me twice, you put some wound tokens on your card to signify how many wounds that you're suffering. This guy, I hit mm, once, okay? And he's got three wounds, put a wound token on him. Keep track, it goes back and forth till he gets killed or I get KO'd. What that means is... Um, I, uh, off the top of my head, shoot, it means a lot of things. Oh, I lose a whole round of turns, uh, and I don't get the glory or anything from here, and there's some other penalties to that that uh, I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> so I would have to look in the book, of course. Okay, so now the other player goes, fine, and now it's the 
adventure phase. Okay, we did the move phase. I showed you that. Then the adventure phase, meaning you interact with the space you're on, whether you're in a treasure, just kind of out in the jungle or in the water, whatever, right? And then it's the villain phase. What that means is we draw a villain event. And villain events is a stack of cards, of course. Here we go. La di da. What's this one say? Do do do. Vile tactics. Roll once on vile organization's tactics. Move the villains track one step forward. So we'll do that. Move it one step forward and the Nazi tactics. Well, what is that? I'll show you. There's a special card, Nazi tactics. All I gotta do is roll a six sided die and it'll tell you what to do. So, a lot of the things are printed on the cards, and which is helpful, so you don't have to keep going to the what you call it manual. All right, I rolled a three. Three, four is a blitz. Uh, place two Nazi figures on the board in random locations. How do you do random? Well, you just pick a location card. And it tells you somewhere on the map where to put the Nazi. Fine. And you use those for treasures, too, to randomly put the treasures when you find one and replace it on the board. Any hero, la-da-da, space adjacent to a Nazi must immediately fight, la-di-da. Any hero adjacent to four space with a villain must engage in one fight round against a villain. Fine. Whatever. All right, so it's pretty self-explanatory. So you would do that. And then the next uh, thing is the uh, outpost. What you do is the secret base. There's only one on the board currently. Where is he? Here he is. <clears throat> He's in near Western Europe. And there's only one. So you roll one die for that. Okay, three, four, or f four, five, or six would place a Nazi on a <clears throat> random place on the board. Now the danger there, not only when the board fills up with Nazis, but if you run out of Nazis to put on the board, then the Nazi tracker moves up another score there. They score more. So it's a good idea to kill some Nazis when you get a chance, when you're brave enough to do so. Now, La di da di da, ta da ta ta. Then the villain adventure step. What that means is the villains now interact with the space they're on, and they're always on a treasure space. And again, all they have to do is roll dice to search. They don't have to do any treasures or cliffhangers. And uh, so it's very easy for them to find treasures. If they don't make it, there's no penalty, as far as I know. You know, I'll have to look up the rule for that. And uh, if you fight the enemies and you win, they get KO'd, they get removed from the board, and it takes multiple turns for them to return to the board. So that gives you a chance to catch up, hopefully. And uh, let's see, did you do, and then the end phase is just replenish any treasures that were found so that you can uh, fill up the board. You gotta have a total of four treasures. That's a quick overview of Fortune and Glory. There are some small nuances that you can look up in the book but um, I do recommend this game for the theme the Indiana Jones theme it's got a couple uh, expansions that give you more cards and those are coming in the mail soon and uh, <clears throat> excuse me uh, so for those who don't like to be at the mercy of dice and cards that would aggravate those types of players. I don't mind. I like dice. I like cards. Uh, most reviewers complain that there isn't any strategy involved. However, I disagree. Uh, trying to decide where to go as far as collecting treasure, your risk versus reward. Is there a boss Nazi? <clears throat> Pardon me, on the space. Well, or do I want to go somewhere else for a cheaper treasure? collect more than one and get to a city to sell it well uh, more strategy would be do I want to spend some of my glory to fly to a city or just do it the hard way just roll dice and move there strategy is to win to use some of your bonus cards that you bought or earned for free and uh, you know 
And if you're on the same space as another hero, you get to off a cliffhanger or a challenge. Let's say lore here. Let's say my lore, like this guy's lore sucks. He's only got two. So if you're on the same space, you go, hey, look, your lore is four. Why don't you do the challenge? So there's strategy involved, lots of luck, but strategy, uh, I recommend this game if you can find it. It's currently out of print. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is Fortune and Glory. Highly recommended. See you next time.